Today's Mass is offered for the soul of Emilia Pizzuto, deceased family members of the Pizzuto family. We offer the Mass for Tuesday in the sixth week of Easter. I welcome all those who are praying with us as we offer the Holy Eucharist. Let us rejoice and be glad and give glory to God. For the Lord our God, the Almighty, reigns. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me, to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Grant Almighty and merciful God that we may in truth receive a share in the resurrection of Christ, your Son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. While Paul and Silas were in Philippi, the crowd joined in attacking them. The magistrates had them stripped of their clothing and ordered them to be beaten with rods. After they had given Paul and Silas a severe flogging, they threw them into prison and ordered the jailer to keep them securely. Following these instructions, he put them in the innermost cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly that there was an earthquake, so violent that the foundations of the prison were shaken. Immediately all the doors were opened. Everyone's chains were unfastened. When the jailer woke up and saw the prison doors wide open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself, since he supposed that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted in a loud voice, Do not, do not harm yourself for we are all here. The jailer called for lights, and rushing in, he fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them outside and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They answered, Believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, you and your household. Paul and Silas spoke the word of the Lord to him, to all who were in his house. At the same hour of the night, he took them and washed their wounds. Then he and his entire family were baptized. Without delay, he brought them up into the house and set food before them. And he and his entire household rejoiced that he had become a believer in God. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Your right hand has saved me, O Lord. Your right hand has saved me, O Lord. I give you thanks, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods I sing your praise, I bow down before your holy temple and give thanks to your name for your steadfast love and faithfulness. Your right hand has saved me, O Lord. For you have exalted your name and your word above everything. On the day I called, you answered me. You increased my strength of soul. 
Your right hand has saved me, O Lord. Your right hand delivers me. The Lord will fulfill his purpose forever. The Lord will fulfill his purpose for me. Your steadfast love, O Lord, and yours forever. Do not forsake the work of your hands. Your right hand has saved me, O Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord says, I will send you the Spirit of Truth, who will lead you to the whole truth. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father, he said to the disciples, Now I am going to him who sent me. Yet none of you asks me, Where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your hearts. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the Advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. When he comes, he will prove the world wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment, about sin because they do not believe in me, about righteousness because I am going to the Father and you will see me no longer, about judgment because the ruler of this world has been condemned. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We live in very absurd times, we might say, if you're walking the wrong way against the arrow in the supermarket, you are ready to be taken away in chains and beaten and crucified, like St. Paul was brought with Silas into the prison of Philippi. The slightest little transgression, you are ready for the gulag, and that's how our new COVID world is. We are living in absurd times. So, it seems appropriate that we might read the great writers of absurd literature, especially children's literature, such as Lewis Carroll, who was an absolute genius of human psychology. I'd like to read you commentary by Father George Rutler on this farewell passage, Jesus is saying farewell to the disciples. Their reaction is one of shock. They think this is absolutely absurd. How could he leave us when he has brought us to this point? So far, we have been formed and instructed. We have seen healings. We have seen great miracles, great prodigies of God's generosity. So this is the commentary of Father George for today. The apostles are in shock when Jesus says that he is leaving them. He is eager to tell them where he is going, but they are too shaken to ask the question. They think only of the astonishing few years he has been with them along the way. He wants them to remember what he said, but then he prods them on to a future which at this moment they cannot imagine as they grieve for what they think they are losing. One thinks of what the White Queen said to Alice in Wonderland, quote, it's a poor sort of memory that only works backwards. That is a sort of comment made in a topsy-turvy world. 
but it is not absurd from the perspective of eternity. The memory belongs to the imaginative part of the intellect that is part of the soul. The imagination thinks of both past and future. If you change memory to imagination, then the White Queen's comment makes sense. It's a poor sort of memory that only works backwards. In fact, not fiction, Christ is the beginning and the end. By stirring up memories of what he has done, he opens up the way to what he will do. The Bible is not a scrapbook of nostalgic vignettes of the past. It is an explanation of where we are heading. Mary Magdalene is able to walk with her Lord when she stops clinging to him. Love unites past and future. In 1808, the wife of the Irish poet Thomas Moore hid from him when she was disfigured by smallpox. She opened the door and returned to him when he recited, No, the heart that has truly loved never forgets, but as truly loves on to the close. In the Eucharist, the divine love says to us, Do this in memory of me. In that moment, we are in the upper room, in our own church, and in heaven. So we might say today's first reading is a, an explanation of how the memory can lead to imagination. St. Paul remembers the power of Christ in the moment that he was called on the road to Damascus, the prodigies that had been worked as he preached. Now, in prison in Philippi, his imagination can extend to what God will do, and he is not uh, uh, disappointed. As God arranges an earthquake, Paul and Silas are freed, the jailer and his household receive baptism. As our song comments with joy, Your right hand has saved me, O Lord. Each one of us can say the same to the Lord for his saving deeds, not only in the past, but in the future. We offer to God our prayers and needs. Father in heaven, hear the prayers we offer to you. We pray in this time of the approaching ascension that our Lord may intercede for all of our special needs, especially that we bring to this Holy Eucharist today. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer, that in moments of sadness and doubt and shock at our topsy-turvy world that appears to be absurd, we may turn to the Ascended Christ for his intercession and his strength and calm. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the sick amongst our community, our fellow parishioners, our family members, all for whom we have promised to pray. For their healing, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the overcoming of the COVID virus in our province and throughout the world and for God's blessings on our new opening up of businesses and services starting today. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the needs of our parish school assumption, for the needs of our catechesis, for those children under preparation for First Communion and Confirmation, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, hear the prayers we have offered. Grant, in fact, what we have prayed for 
through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us a bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice in my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, that in this time of the law, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the Lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise and even the heavenly powers, with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice once more with the thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial 
of his death and resurrection, we offer the Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world from her to her fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Michael our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Emilia Pizzuto, whom you have called from this world to yourself, grant that she, who was united with your Son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles and all the saints, who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days. By the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. We await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, the glory are yours now, Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity. In accordance with your will, live and reign forever and ever. Peace of the Lord be with you always, and with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be. The Christ had to suffer and rise from the dead and so enter into his glory. Let us pray. 
Hear, O Lord, our prayers of this most holy exchange by which you have redeemed us we may bring your help in its present life and ensure for us eternal gladness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you, with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him. We humbly pray, do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits, who prowl throughout the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. We fly to thy patronage, O Holy Mother of God. Despise not our petitions and our necessities. Deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. 